Now at four, breaking news in a Lexington neighborhood where police say they heard, or people say they heard gunshots and someone screaming for help. We're live with the latest. A major storm system ready to blast the bluegrass, say, with high winds and heavy rains. And I'm tracking it all next. The Kentucky Wildcats get their first big test of the season tonight when they take on Duke in Chicago. We'll get you ready for the Cats and Blue Devils now at four. This is WKYT News at four. Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. It's been a rainy day in parts of the bluegrass with temperatures hovering around 60 degrees. You're looking live at one of our sky cams in downtown Lexington where it could be a very windy night. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris. Yeah, Jennifer, those winds really are going to crank up late tonight and into the day tomorrow. We've talked about this for the better part of the past week that the middle of this week would bring a big storm toward the bluegrass state and the high wind threat is there later tonight. This is a wind advisory by the way that is out for most of the bluegrass state for 40 to 45 mile per hour wind gusts late tonight and especially once we get into the day on Wednesday. So time to batten down the hatches. Here's what your Defender Radar Network is seeing locally. Not a whole lot out there. Look to our west, though. Showers, thunderstorms, flash flood warnings, even a tornado warning with that cell into south central parts of Missouri. And that line of thunderstorms extends all the way toward the Gulf of Mexico. It's got a blizzard behind that area of low pressure into parts of Colorado, western Kansas, and Nebraska. All of that rolling toward the east. So we've got wet and windy. And then a little taste of winter time that tries to show up in your seven day forecast. We'll break it down in a busy, busy outlook. Jennifer, what I could back here in about 15 minutes from now. Now to a breaking news alert. We're tracking in Lexington. Police are on the scene of a shooting on the north side of town. Investigators have blocked off much of LaSalle Road near Green Acres Park, which is off Russell Cave Road. There are multiple crime scenes connected to the investigation. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live with the breaking details. Hillary. Good afternoon, Jennifer. That's right. As you mentioned, we know Lexington police are working a couple different scenes here in this area. The first over at Mr. Money on New Circle Road, about a mile from where we are here at a second scene on LaSalle Road, where much of this roadway does remain blocked off at this time. Neighbors here on LaSalle say around 2.30 this afternoon, they heard multiple gunshots fill the street and someone yelling, quote, help, I am hit. Several detectives are out here looking around at areas marked by at least a dozen orange cones. They also have been looking at and documenting the outside of several homes along this street. Now over at the other scene at Mr. Money's on New Circle Road, people there tell us they saw a black car pull up with someone then getting out and firing shots before taking off. Now still a lot to learn out here. Police have been taking several witness statements out here on this street and they have confirmed that they do have two shooting victims right now at UK Hospital. They have yet to confirm for us though what of all of this is connected. Live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Thank you, Hillary. There's a worldwide search for suspects in Friday's attacks in Paris. Meanwhile, France continues its airstrikes against ISIS in Syria. Russia increases its bombing campaign, and several U.S. governors say due to security concerns, they don't want Syrian refugees in their states. Aaron McLaughlin joins us live from Paris with the latest. It's our top story at four. The hunt is on for 26-year-old Salah Abdeslam, one of the suspected terrorists in Friday's attack in Paris. His brother Ibrahim blew himself up during the attacks that left 129 dead. Their family tells CNN they had no idea the two had become radicalized. But my brother, who has participated in this terrorist attack, was probably psychologically ready to commit such an act. The worldwide search for Salah Abdeslam continues as coalition fighters intensify airstrikes against ISIS in Syria and Iraq. French President Francois Hollande tells the world France won't back down. A thought of weakening the French passion for receiving the whole world. They have already lost that fight. Russia is also increasing its military response, doubling the number of airstrikes in Syria. It's part of the stern message Putin has for ISIS after confirming it was a bomb that brought down a Russian jetliner over Egypt October 31st. ISIS has taken credit. In the U.S., a political battle is brewing over President Obama's plan to increase the number of refugees allowed in America. 
A majority of the governors across the country say they don't want Syrian refugees in their states. They're concerned what happened in Paris could happen closer to home. More than 20 governors, most of them Republicans, are the ones trying to block refugees from settling in their states. Many say they're worried terrorists will get into the U.S. by posing as refugees. Kentucky Governor-elect Matt Bevin shares those concerns. In a statement, he said in part, quote, My primary responsibility as governor of Kentucky will be to protect the citizens of the Commonwealth. This is why I am opposing the resettlement of Syrian nationals until we can better determine the full extent of any risks to our citizens. Bevin's stance is at odds with current governor Steve Bashir, who says Kentucky should do the Christian thing and welcome all refugees as long as they pass extensive background checks. Public safety is one of the top priorities of a governor, and we're going to vet these people. We already do, and we're going to do that to make sure that they're who they say they are. But assuming that they're victims, uh, we need to step up and do our part. Governor Bashir leaves office on December 7th. We're told three families who have already fled Syria are already settled in central Kentucky. Bevin could try to block any more from coming here after he's sworn into office December 8th. You'll hear from Kentucky Senator Rand Paul in a live interview about the topic coming up at 4.30. And we're working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. We continue to track the investigation into the murder of a seven-year-old little girl. Police found Gabby Doolin dead by a creek behind Allen County Scottsville High school on Saturday night, less than an hour after her mother reported her missing from the football field. Say police say they are there's still no suspects in the case, but police are checking out leads and they are questioning people. We'll have an update on WKYT News at 6. An investigation is underway after a number of drugs were found inside the Wayne County Jail. The jailer says it started last week after a half dozen inmates were sent to the hospital for overdosing. He says the inmates were hiding the drugs in their body cavities. They will stop at nothing to get drugs into jails or to take drugs. Coming up on WKYT News at 530, you'll hear more from the jailer about the troubling discoveries. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. It's a battle of two top five undefeated teams tonight in the Champions Classic in Chicago. Second-ranked Kentucky gets its first big test against fifth-ranked Duke. Our Brian Milam is in Chicago with a preview. Good afternoon from the United Center in Chicago, where tonight it's Kentucky and Duke at the State Farm Champions Classic. It's also a homecoming for a pair of Wildcats. Tyler Ulis and Charles Matthews both hail from the Windy City. For both, it's an opportunity to showcase their skills in front of their friends and family, but tickets hard to come by for Matthews. I mean, definitely going back home and playing in front of you, you know, with your hometown and home city, so that's a that's a great accomplishment right there, being able to play at the United Center, so I'm happy for that. It's good to go back home always. Uh, we haven't been home in a while. Uh, we get to play in front of our family and friends, guys who don't get to see us play all year, so you know it's a good experience and we're excited for it. I'm still trying to get extra tickets as of now, so I can't even answer that right now. You guys have to ask your, your fellow teammates? About yeah, yeah, that. I've been asking them, trying to see who's not using all the tickets, but this is a huge game, so I'm pretty sure everybody's using a lot of their tickets right now. So not a lot of love for Matthews. He's a rookie, so he's going to have to pay his dues a little bit. Tyler Eula says he'd have about 13 friends and family here in Sweet Home Chicago. Reporting from the United Center, I'm Brian Milam, WKYT. The game tips off tonight at 7.30, and you can watch it live on ESPN. Coach John Calipari getting some good news this morning on ESPN's Mike and Mike show. 2016 five-star power forward Bam Adebayo announced he's coming to Kentucky. The six-foot-eight North Carolina native chose the Cats over NC State, calling UK a winning program with a great all-around environment. Goop. Not much change today on Wall Street. The Dow picked up six to finish at 17,489. The Nasdaq added a point. Google is taking on Yelp and TripAdvisor by offering incentives for users to write reviews, fix mistakes, and add photos as a local guide on Google Maps. Each time you contribute, you'll earn 200 points. We'll get you one terabyte of free Google Drive storage. Top local guides will be entered to win an all-expenses-paid trip to Google headquarters for the 2016 Local Guide Summit. A new survey from Bankrate.com finds the number one financial priority for most Americans is to stay current on their bills. 
38% say it tops their list. That's followed by paying down debt and saving. The survey also finds both men and women noted improved financial security compared to a year ago. Taco Bell is switching over to cage-free eggs. By 2017, the fast food chain's 6,000 locations will only use eggs from free-range chickens. The move comes as customers demand healthier and more sustainable food options. Both McDonald's and Burger King have committed to using cage-free eggs. McDonald's is scrapping its dollar menu. Starting in January, the fast food chain will test a new value menu called McPick 2. Customers can pick two items for $2. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul is looking to introduce legislation to stop refugees from countries with significant jihadist movements. We have a live interview with the senator ahead. And we'll take a look at efforts to stop ISIS recruitment here in the U.S. and how big businesses are getting involved. A pizza delivery store in Richmond is making these pizzas as fast as they can, trying to keep up with all of their extra customers. They're donating all of their proceeds to Officer Daniel Ellis' family today. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon to you. Amber Philpott and Sam Dick reporting. French officials say they are searching for a second fugitive directly involved in the Paris attacks. And the brother of that suspect is urging him to turn himself in. Mohammed Adda Salam told French TV that his brother Salah is devout, but that he showed no signs of being radical Islam. Uh, meanwhile, police in Germany have released seven people who were arrested in connection with that investigation of the Paris attacks. A news agency quotes a police official as saying that none of them had any links to the attacks. The debate is heating up over a White House program that would bring 10,000 Syrian refugees here to this country. Some are concerned that ISIS terrorists could hide among the refugees and carry out attacks here in the U.S. Republicans are eyeing legislative options to block the president's plan, and more than half of the nation's governors say they will not accept the refugees. Governor-elect Matt Bevin said, quote, he is opposing the resettlement of Syrian nationals until we can better determine the full extent of any risk to our citizens, end of quote. And current governor Steve Bashir says Kentucky should do the Christian thing and welcome all refugees who have passed extensive background checks. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul joins us now live via satellite about allowing Syrian refugees into this country. And good afternoon, Senator. You have announced legislation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You have announced legislation that would suspend issuing visas for countries with a high risk of terrorism and impose a waiting period for background checks on issuing visas from other countries until the American people can be assured that terrorists can enter this country through our immigration and visa system. So what specifically are you proposing that the U.S. do that is not being done now to screen and vet refugees beyond what I just mentioned there? I think to be safe, we shouldn't be admitting people from these countries that have radical Islamic movements. And we have to be very careful about those who come here as refugees. So I think for now we should press pause and we shouldn't admit any. One of the reasons is because, you know, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where I live, just a couple of years ago, we admitted two Iraqi refugees, and it turns out they wanted to buy surface-to-air surface missiles, uh, Stinger missiles, to harm us. And as the investigation went on, we found out that one of them actually had their fingerprints on a bomb or a bomb fragment in Iraq. He was in our system, and we just didn't do a very good job vetting him to make sure he could, should come to this country. So for right now, I'd say no more refugees. My bill would ban it. But my bill goes a little bit farther. My bill says that if you live in a country where radical Islam is a huge and significant movement, we don't want you to immigrate, visit, or study in our country. We want to make sure you're not a terrorist before you come over here. Even in 9-11, we had people who came here on student visas and attacked us. And the, remember the Boston bombing, the two boys that did the Boston bombing? They were here as refugees also. So we've had a great deal of people come to our country under false pretenses. My bill would stop that, would say, right now, let's, let's stop and make sure that the people who are already here are not here with evil intentions. Oh, could not a terrorist slip through uh, coming through a country that is peaceful, let's say, like Belgium? Yes, and that's what my bill also does. My bill says that if you're coming from Belgium, England, or France, 
that you have to wait 30 days. And people say, well, that would be a lot of waiting. Well, if you join the global entry, which is like the trusted traveler program we have in the United States, and you do a background check, and you're a regular businessman or woman from France or Belgium, you'd still travel freely. But if you're just a French citizen who walks down to the airport and says, I want to go to America, you're going to have to wait 30 days. I think this is important because the tragedy in Paris, most of the attackers, I think, are going to turn out to be French citizens, and we don't have sufficient way to stop them from getting on a plane and coming to the United States. So we need to have a waiting period, and they need to be checked out before they get on a plane and decide to fly to New York. Real quickly, the American people know how slow Congress moves. I think I'm correct in stating that. What's your time frame then in getting this passed <laughs> and in place? Uh, you, the, the American people are right. It's pitiful up here about getting anything done. But the American people, I think, are being heard on this. I'm hearing it loud and clear from all over Kentucky. They don't want more refugees sent from the Middle East to Kentucky. And I'm going to do everything I can to stop it. I will be going to the floor shortly. I hope our bill will be introduced today. Whether or not we get a vote this week on it, we'll see. But I'll be asking those in leadership to give me a vote on it as soon as possible. All right, Senator Rand Paul will be tracking that. Thank you for sharing some time with us here this afternoon on WKYT. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Well, a quarter of ISIS recruits from the United States have come from the state of Minnesota. The state's large Somali community is often the most recruited by terrorists. Now a public-private partnership has raised almost a million dollars to target youth programs. Jamie Yukas looks at what's being done to protect the most vulnerable Somalis. At least 15 Somali-American men from Minnesota have attempted to enlist with ISIS. Five are on trial right now. It's left their families and the largest Somali community in the United States reeling. Please, we need help. Somali community, they need help. That's why the White House is backing a public-private pilot program. It has raised nearly a million dollars to help at-risk Somali youth in Minnesota. I want you to lead this. The nonprofit Youth Prize has an after-school program. We added those two tubes together. Ten percent of the students at Minneapolis public schools are Somali, and some have difficulty fitting in. Some people, they make fun of it just because I have a scarf on. It's our culture. We need to respect our culture and, like, don't make fun of it. The content. New American Academy tutors students and finds them jobs. No. Unemployment among Somalis is around 21 percent, about three times the rate for the general population. That adds to the community's sense of alienation. Do people really come up to you and call you a terrorist? I mean, here and there, actually. I mean, I try to show my, my culture through my actions, like always. Try to be nice to them, courteous, try to good speech so they know I'm not a terrorist or a bad person. Community leaders agree. Stamping out those anti-Muslim stereotypes is the first step to helping Somali youth reach their potential. We have to help them understand their role and have them feel welcome. And I'm not sure if Minnesota has been as welcoming as it could be. Their work is just getting started. Jamie Yukis, CBS News, Minneapolis. Minnesota's U.S. attorney recently wrote about this very problem in an op-ed for a newspaper in Minnesota calling for an end to what he describes as Islamophobia. We are gearing up for what could be a very windy night in the bluegrass. Yes, showers, storms, strong winds headed this way. All out west. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. When I say out west, I mean not that far west, right? Yeah, exactly right. This is getting close to the Mississippi River, Sam and Amber, and it's going to roll on into town late tonight and certainly during the day tomorrow. The winds are going to be huge with this. Look at everything spiraling around our low pressure center here. Remember, everything goes the opposite of your clock. Counterclockwise flow around that low pressure. Center. Look at all the juice being pulled up out ahead of that. Severe thunderstorm warnings, flash flood warnings, even a tornado warning into Arkansas. Behind that colder air coming in, we've had blizzard conditions reported into parts of uh, the Rockies and uh, into western Kansas and Nebraska. What we're seeing though right now is that wall of water inching toward western Kentucky. It's a slow mover. We'll get into central and eastern Kentucky until we get into late tomorrow morning and early afternoon. Right now, Defender Radar Network with nothing going on. And because of the winds, 
We have a wind advisory that is out for all of central and eastern Kentucky. Those gusts could reach 40 to 45 miles per hour. Evening ahead, though, is in pretty good shape. Still on the mild side, it's a dry evening, but those winds are going to begin to pick up the pace a little bit. When I get back in a few minutes, yeah, we're tracking some wet and windy weather, but also maybe a touch of some winter heading into the weekend for the first time this season, guys, in a few. All right, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. We know how compassionate people in Kentucky are, and help just continues to pour in for the family of a fallen Kentucky police officer. Just a day after a spaghetti dinner was held for Richmond Officer Daniel Ellis, the Papa John's there is holding a fundraiser for the family. WKYT's Mark Barber is in Madison County with reaction to the outpouring of support. Officer Daniel Ellis's badge number is still everywhere in Richmond. Today it's hanging from the counters and hanging on the windows here at Papa John's. Their fundraiser is coming with a personal connection for some of their pizza delivery drivers because they knew the fallen officer. Chelsea Story is working behind the counter today, but sometimes she's behind the wheel delivering these pizzas. She says she knew Officer Daniel Ellis and his family because she delivered to them a few times. After the seven year veteran of the Richmond Police Department was shot and killed by a robbery suspect a week and a half ago, everyone here knew they had to do something for his widow and young son. That's why they're giving everything they make today to Ellis's family. It took a week to get corporate to sign off on it, and they had to bring in a lot of extra hands to handle extra customers, but they say they made it happen for their fallen hero. They uh, were definitely good people. It's sad what happened. A lot of the times it is just 50%, but we just wanted to do all that we could, and we figured that would be the best way to do it. On a good day, they bring in $5,000. On the Super Bowl, they pull in $8,000. Today, their general manager thinks they will see their busiest day ever and bring in $10,000. In Richmond, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, if you would like to support the Ellis family, the Papa John's is located off of exit 87 on the Eastern Bypass in Richmond, and they close at 12.30 a.m. Some students are collecting stuffed animals to give to law enforcement. That's right. The stuffed animals are put in patrol cars when calls officers respond to may involve children. Our Rebecca Smith has a look at Bears mm -hmm. on Patrol from Madison County. Foley Middle School's gymnasium looks a bit like a nursery these days. The girls volleyball team is collecting stuffed animals to give away. When kids are scared and bad situations, that can cheer them up. Coach Eddie Coulter says it's Officer Daniel Ellis's untimely death that's given so many in Madison County the will to give back. I think everybody wants to do something to honor him in some way. And so, you know, this was, I felt like a way that we could honor him as well as help others. Foley Middle School, along with Madison Southern High School, have a collective goal of getting 200 stuffed animals to be given out to EKU law enforcement. The students seem to really appreciate the underlying message and Officer Ellis's contributions to the community. He was a big part to this community and he helped all of us a lot. And I think it just inspired people to help everyone else just the way he helped. Well, I think that when kids are in really like bad situations like a car wreck or a fire, it'll give them some comfort. In Madison County, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Now, the school's bear donation drive is open to the public through next Tuesday. If you're interested in dropping off a new or gently used bear, you can take it to the school's front entry. The third annual sporting art auction is set for tomorrow out of Keeneland, but you have the opportunity to enjoy all of the beautiful artwork a day early. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about with a preview. Hey, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here at Keeneland in the sales pavilion, where until 6 o'clock tonight, you have just like a little over an hour. You can come check it out for yourself. Good news, things open up again tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock with the auction happening tomorrow night. Now, it's not just about horses here. This is all sporting events. you got some beagles. We're working with dogs. There's sailboats. Beautiful items you two can check out. Amy Gregory is with us. And Amy, this is the third annual sporting art auction. The popularity of it. Folks can come and see it. They can buy it, which clearly is the goal, and just enjoy some of this amazing artwork. It is. I mean, our guys, we work with Crossgate Gallery. Keeneland has a partnership with Crossgate Gallery. And our representatives really travel all over the United States and Europe to collect this art. So it's beautiful Troys and Munnings and Andre Potters, Leroy Neiman. We have quite a selection here, and we really want the community to come out and enjoy it. 
such a variety of different items, as we mentioned, from horses to dogs to sailboats and all kinds of different activities represented here. You guys kind of have a little bit uh, of everything for everybody in this. That's right. That's right. There's something to appeal if you are interested in equine art. We have some by masters as well as talented new artists. There's zebras. There's farmyard scenes. There's a little bit of sporting. There's a sporting element to all of it. So how does it work? We, you, folks can come out till 6 o'clock tonight or tomorrow morning doors open at 11 and then what's happening tomorrow night? Tomorrow night the auction begins at 4 o'clock. We encourage people if you would see something that you would like to buy to come out and pre-register, pick up your paddle and then it will function much like a horse auction. We'll be seated in the arena of the cell pavilion. We'll have the auctioneers in the stand and we'll conduct the auction. And even if you're not buying, which we would like you to buy, but if you're not buying, come out and enjoy it. It's great theater. Well, everything that they do here, as usual, at Keeneland, putting on wonderful activities for you to come and be a part of. And we're not selling horses here. This is beautiful artwork, so come be a part of it. You can also check it out online at thesportingartauction.com. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about at Keeneland. Back to you guys. That looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Got to switch gears here. Former Two and a Half Men star Charlie Sheen says he has HIV. In an interview this morning, the 50 year old says he tested positive for the virus that causes AIDS about four years ago. Sheen said some people in his inner circle who he told about his diagnosis managed to extort close to $10 million from him. Drug and alcohol use have marred Sheen's personal and professional life in recent years. He was kicked off of CBS's Two and a Half Men in 2011 after an explosive meltdown. The show that debuted in 2003 made Sheen one of TV's highest paid actors and at its peak, was TV's most watched sitcom. A Kentucky man continues to wow the world with his amazing voice. Harlan County native Jordan Smith took the stage last night for his latest live performance on The Voice, and he did not disappoint. In all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. That is beautiful. Smith chose an unconventional song performing the Christian hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. He got a standing ovation from all four judges. They complimented him on his song choice, given all the tragic events that have happened in the world over the past week. You can download Jordan Smith's performance from last night on iTunes. Chris is talking about a lot of wind coming our way, and I've already seen a lot of folks have their Christmas decorations up, Good so uh, watch out for those maybe yes. end up down the street. Yeah, we don't want that to happen, Chris Bailey. Have you put your stuff up yet? Why are you guys looking at me when you say that, huh? <laughs> well, you've uh, been talking about the looking, last week. looking in my direction. Listen, I, I tie mine down, all right? I, I go Clark Griswold with the staple gun. All over the house. All right, here's what we're dealing with right now. Temperatures that are upper 50s to around 60 into much of the region. Uh, not getting a lot of sunshine out there this afternoon. Had the rains earlier this morning. That beginning to go by the wayside. Still, though, kind of a nasty look that is out there across much of central and eastern Kentucky. Here's the storm system out to the west. That big wall of water you see right now across parts of the Mississippi Valley and west. Well, that rolls into town as we go through the day tomorrow. That will give us some very gusty winds. Those winds tomorrow. It could be 40 to 45 miles an hour. A little breezy out there now, so folks are out and about driving. Hold on to the steering wheels with an update on traffic. Here's Officer Don. Get a wide look at Lexington rush hour traffic this afternoon, an idea of traffic flow. Now, we have a couple of collisions. One is on Fenderson. That's a non entry crash that police are working right now. So we could see some delays there uh, on that street. Uh, another issue we're having is inbound Nicholasville Road. This crash just down from Rosemont. And it has the inbound lane blocked. There are four vehicles involved in that injury collision, and that's the only inbound lane available. So that's a that's an issue there on Nicholasville Road. As far as drive times, other than those two incidents, it looks like we're okay on the interstate, heading into Scott County toward Georgetown, also toward Paris, Winchester, uh, and Richmond. So a few normal stuff. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. Some monkey business at the Bengals game and an otter that's not a morning animal. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. The Cincinnati Bengals may have lost last night. Just ask Chris Bailey about how bad that feels. But the halftime show, definitely a winner in some people's minds. Some oh, quitters right. got up to some real monkey business out on the field. These little monkey <laughs> jockeys had a fun time riding these dogs during the show. 
The sheepdog and monkeys were brought to the stadium by the Team Ghost Riders group. The halftime event sparked a storm on social media with dozens tweeting their view of the event. I like the dogs. I guess they round up the other animals out there, yeah. too. Oh, all, right. all right. Interesting. Well, for many of us, and those of us who work on the night shift, like the two of us, waking up early in the morning can be a bit of a challenge. And that is also the case for one animal in San Francisco. I know exactly how you feel. No, you Ryer the River Otter was quite angry when his owner tried to wake him up. If he could talk, he would have said, there's got to be an otter way. Get it? Ryer is the San Francisco's aquarium of the bay. He seems to reflect how many of us feel in the morning as he puts his head back under that cover. We feel you, Ryer. We do. All right. Much more to come now at 5 o'clock on WKYT.